For years, I was fueled by fear. All I saw when I looked in the mirror was inadequacy. All I saw was brokenness, my own and that of the world around me. But not anymore. Today, I want to share with you a practice that helps me feel fully loved and fully known, something that isn't always comfortable, but I believe is necessary. It stems from the way that I grew up. I grew up in a small, beautiful town with loving parents and neighbors who knew me by name. My quaint town could have been featured on a vintage postcard. But all that beauty was a veneer that hid brokenness. Much of the town was actually adrift. Many of my friends and even their parents sought grounding in things like binge drinking and drugs, denying the realities around them. So much so that by the time I was 16, I already had three close friends threatened to take their own lives with one succeeding. These cycles continued year after year in my small town, and I too felt adrift. I secretly felt worthless, but felt compelled to pretend like nothing was wrong. So afraid of being caught in the patterns of destruction that I saw happening around me, I came up with a solution. I self-diagnosed as the neighborhood anchor. I was the friend that people would call in the middle of the night to cry to. I was the designated driver at every party, and I was the trustee volunteer at every community event. I grounded myself in busyness, but it was only my drug of choice. I binged on busyness and serving others, like my friends binged on cheap beer. And it wasn't until someone else my parents, in this case, held up a mirror for me to really examine myself. Did I not realize how far from grounded I was and that I was neglecting myself? Have you ever felt adrift? What's your drug of choice? Have you ever wondered if people really knew you? And if they did, would they even care? I've wondered this often. I've wondered if potentially the answer could have helped with all the silent suffering that I saw and experienced. And then I found something. I found something that helps me with the answer. It is this, accountability, mutual accountability with others. I've learned that a mirror constructed by our own perceptions does not often portray an accurate image of who we are. It's clouded by pride or insecurity, fear, inadequacy. Mutual accountability means being transparent and giving permission for others to see the real you and for them to actually tell you what they see. Years after I left my small town, I practiced this type of accountability in a trio with two women my age. Here are the rules. Each week, we ask each other 10 questions in a confidential environment. There is true transparency and honesty with no judgment. There's charity and grace accompanied by strength. I'll give you an example of some of the questions we ask, and I encourage you to reflect and think about how you would answer. Some are more emotional, such as, what bitterness or resentment have you experienced, and how are you expressing a loving attitude? Or, what worries or concerns are you currently facing? Others more practical, like, how are you stewarding your finances? and some encouraging. What is something to celebrate? What is something that you are proud of? My friends see me, and I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I don't wanna enter the conversation with my trio. It can be brutal, as I know that they may have some hard truths for me to hear that week, and vice versa. But I think it's important to continue. I believe that in order to feel fully loved, 
We must feel fully known, which requires a certain level of honesty. I do not want to be simply known as a picturesque postcard version of myself, but as the real and imperfect image of me. Imagine if we all practice this. What would it look like for the spouse who's tempted to have an affair with a coworker if they were being honest and held accountable in this situation? Imagine the business person who has the option to cut corners in his work and make an unethical choice. Imagine your friends holding you accountable to your own dream. Maybe it's becoming an artist or going back to school and encouraging you to take the next step. My friends see the real me. They say what is hard to say and often hard to hear, but they have also taught me that this can come from a place of love and not of judgment. And there's an added bonus. Having these questions in my head continually makes me mindful through the week. I've learned, I'm learning how to receive criticism and not be so defensive about my failures. Do you ever fear that you'll wake up in 10 years and not be proud of what you see? that you may be caught in the very patterns that kept you from achieving your dreams. That fear is very real for me. But now, when I wake up, I plant my feet firmly on the ground, putting one foot in front of the other, knowing that I will not be caught in the habits that will keep me from moving forward. When I look back on myself in that small town, I wish I could tell her that though those fears, they may never go away, they will not leave her adrift. One day when she is older, she will walk in the company of others who challenge her to be better, but love her for who she is. And I'm not the only one who's experienced this. I've had mentors who have practiced this type of accountability for over 30 years as they've walked through difficulty in marriage, job changes, disease, and even death of loved ones. So I challenge you to reach out to two trusted peers with whom you can practice mutual accountability with. No matter what age or season of life, having people love you and challenge you and hold you accountable can always be of benefit, even if it's not always comfortable. Thank you. Thank you.